Welcome to another startup and complete car documentation. What we have here is a 2006 Lincoln Town Car Signature Limited. This town car is painted in the light French silk exterior color. On the remote pod, you have the buttons for lock, unlock, trunk release, and panic. You have a secure code, keypad, keyless entry, chrome door handles. The front door panels do have storage. There's your power fuel door release, along with your power trunk release, which is also lockable. Storage compartments. Of course, you get power windows, locks, and mirrors. You also have two-person memory for the driver. And right here are where the power driver seat controls are located. Both front seats are fully powered. And both front seats are also two-stage heated, which the controls for that are located right here. This one has the medium light stone interior color scheme, and the seats are trimmed in premium leather. But now that we're behind the wheel, let's go ahead and start the engine. The Lincoln Town Car is truly a product of a bygone era of the American luxury car. It comes from an era where a luxury car meant simply having a big-bodied cruiser lined in shiny chrome, rich wood, and supple leather, with a ride that made you feel like you were floating down the road in a cloud while sitting on a pillowy soft sofa-like bench seat, with the all-important low-end thrust of a good old naturally aspirated low-stress V8 on tap should you need it. Not a sport mode or paddle shifter in sight, these cars were 100% dedicated to sheer comfort and luxury, and didn't pretend to be anything they weren't. The town car was just that. It used a rear-wheel drive, body-on-frame platform with a basic design that dated back to the late 70s, and yet it continued production all the way into the 2010s decade, offering an alternative to the more modern luxury cars that had come around in recent years. Was it necessarily competitive by the end of its run? Not really. But was it the specific type of car that certain people wanted then and still want today? Absolutely. Lincoln first began using the town car name in 1959 as a special trim package for the Lincoln Continental. It would be 1981 when the Lincoln town car became its own standalone model, and it lasted 30 years from 81 to 2011. Later on, after the town car had been discontinued, Lincoln brought back the town car name for a while for the name of special limousine variants of its MKT crossover although the MKT was dropped after 2019. Now the town car rode on Ford's famous Panther platform. It was an old school rear wheel drive body on frame platform that was produced for 32 years, and for the majority of its lifespan consisted of the Ford Crown Victoria, Mercury Grand Marquis, and Lincoln Town Car Trio. The Crown Vic was the no-frills entry level model, with countless of them being used as taxis and police cars, regularly enduring hundreds of thousands of miles of abuse and wear and tear, cementing the Panther platform's legacy when it comes to reliability. The Grand Marquis was like a Crown Vic, but a bit more nice and upscale. The Town Car was the full-blown luxury car that floated down the road coddling its occupants in supple comfort, and that's not even getting into the Mercury Marauder, which was effectively a four-door muscle car that was briefly sold in the 2000s. But that takes us to the 2006 Town Car, which was coming off a 2003 facelift and chassis re-engineering, along with further updates for 05, which included a new steering wheel and a few minor changes here and there. The US market 06 Lincoln Town Car was offered in the following trim levels. Signature, Signature Limited, Designer, and the extended wheelbase Signature L. 
you had one sole engine, transmission, and drivetrain combo, which comprised of a 239 horsepower 4.6 liter V8 paired to a 4 speed automatic and rear wheel drive. In Lincoln's 2006 sedan lineup, the full size flagship town car was the largest, slotting above the smaller Zephyr and LS. In the instrument cluster, we have four analog gauges, which are your tachometer, speedometer, fuel gauge, and temperature gauge. And you also have a digital info display, which can be gone through via these controls right here. The hazard switch is on top of the steering column. It has a two-spoke design leather and wood steering wheel. It is multifunctional, and as for the controls, on this side you have your cruise control. And then on this side you've got some of your audio controls, volume, and next track. And you even have temperature controls corresponding to the climate control. Not something you see too often, climate controls on steering wheels. The steering wheel is tilt only. The parking brake is foot operated. You have power adjustable pedals as well, and then you have your traction control toggle, your panel dimmer, headlight switch, climate vent for the driver. Right here is your turn signal, high beam, and wiper stock. And it does have a column gear shifter. And a feature this car has, if you put it in drive while the parking brake is set, it will automatically disengage. So going down the center of the interior, you have your central climate vents, an analog clock. Right here is your whole radio head unit. It is AM and FM with a six disc CD changer. Below that, you have a set of dual zone automatic climate controls. Some storage along with a lighter or power outlet. Below that, you also have a dedicated 12 volt power outlet. You have two cup holders integrated into here. Folding center armrest with some storage, got a coin holder, and it will open from both sides. Fold that up, and this being the old school American boat that it is, it's a six seater. You can sit three people across in this front bench. The glove box is lockable. Both sun visors do have vanity mirrors and lights. And the driver's one also has garage home link. Auto dimming rear view. On the overhead console, you got your overhead lighting. And the power controls for your sunroof. It is one touch auto. There are grab handles for the front passenger and rear passengers. But now we'll go ahead and roll down the driver's window and take a look at the engine bay. The driver's window is automatic down. This signature limited comes with the optional 17 inch 9 split spoke chrome alloy rims. is powered by Ford's modular 4.6 liter naturally aspirated V8 engine. 
It has a cast iron block with aluminum heads along with single overhead camshafts and two valves per cylinder. Horsepower is rated at 239 at 4900 RPM, while torque is rated at 287 pound-feet at 4100 RPM. Directing that power to the rear wheels is a 4-speed automatic transmission with low gear selection. Running on regular or leaded with a 19-gallon fuel tank, updated EPA estimates for the town car are 15 mpg in the city and 23 mpg on the highway. It uses an independent short and long arm front suspension and a solid axle multi-link rear setup with air suspension. The town car is brought to a stop by a set of four-wheel ventilated disc brakes, and curb weight can range from 4,300 to 4,500 pounds, give or take. As you saw earlier, the fuel cap is on the driver's side. The back door panels also have storage, also little ashtrays behind here, or coin holders if you want to use it for that. Both front seats have matte pockets on the backs. Rear passengers do get their own set of climate vents, along with reading lights. And a folding center armrest with two cup holders. And you even have that nice Lincoln badge embroidered into the seats as well. Now as for space, I'm about six foot one. The driver's seat is actually further back than I'd have if I was driving, because when I turn the car off it has that feature where it moves back into place to make it easier to get out. And still, leg room is okay. Same thing with foot room. This is a massive car, so obviously the back seat is pretty nice to be in. Headroom's good. The seats are just plush like a couch. Well, the front seats are as well, to be fair. But like I was saying in the Grand Marquis Tour, it's not like an absolute limousine back here. But it's still, you know, because it's an older fashioned car, newer cars, you know, they're doing more to maximize interior space, even with a small car. Especially seeing as the front seat is all the way back, legroom is just okay, but it's still pretty sufficient. But I just uploaded a tour of this car's Panther platform sibling, the Mercury Grand Marquis. So it's nice to film these two back to back. And yeah, the town car definitely just has a much more opulent, luxurious feel. And the Grand Marquis itself is a very comfortable, cushy, nice car. But the town car, you know, it takes it to a whole nother level. I mean, Lincoln is, of course, the Cadillac to Ford, whereas Mercury was sort of the Buick to Ford. Still nice, but not quite as upscale as the flagship luxury brand. This have dual exhausts, and this car does have a power trunk. 
automatically opens up like that. The trunk of the town car offers 21 cubic feet of space, which is quite massive for a sedan. And being the luxury car that it is, it also has a soft closed trunk. Anyhow, thanks for checking out this tour of this 2006 Lincoln Town Car. And as always, stay on the lookout for future tours.